Hello everyone, it's Bernina Jeff at High Fashion Sewing Machines and Quilt Shop in Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, I'm not an employee of Bernina of America. I am a dealership here in Western Colorado. Today I'm going to show you how to use pin tucking feet. Uh, the foot of the month for May of 2023 is pin tucking. So they are feet number 30, 31, 32, and 33. And pin tucking feet have a groove, series of grooves on the bottom and when you sew with a twin needle you get really cool effect you get pin tucking so i'm going to show you how these feet work and all the different settings and um, what you need to do to prepare your machine to make these feet work to be able to use this particular type of effect so today i'm working on the 770 bernina and uh, first off we are going to install the foot so this is a foot number 30 so we're going to come over here to our foot selector. So we're going to touch there. I had foot 32 earlier, so I'm going to select foot 30 and confirm that. So there's foot 30. Now, foot 30 requires a twin needle. And um, I learned all these goodies from the big book of feet. So if you don't own this as a reference, there's 105. I counted them. 105 different feet and ways to use them in this book. So you might think it's a pretty big investment, but if you have a Bernina and you want to use the feet according to all the potential, this is definitely a must have. So uh, I just looked up their numerical order. So I looked up the number 30 feet and all the pin tucking feet are right there on the one page and learned how to use it. So it gives you a nice big pictures, uh, different effects. So we're going to do the three groove number 30 in this demo. And so to find out what size twin needle, the only way this works is with a twin needle. So uh, if your dealership doesn't have twin needles, call our shop. We have every size of twin needle. Uh, they're rated based upon how far apart the needles are. So this is a 4.0 needle and it will work on this foot because you take it down here and you line it up and if the uh, needle lines up in the grooves it's the right uh, size for your foot. Uh, there are instructions when you buy the foot that uh, will help uh, determine that too but we're going to use the four because it fits. Now I'm going to use my handy dandy needle grabber. This is a new one with a handle so it's nice so I'm going to put it up in there line it up. Of course I need to get more straight on. There, it's further back than I thought. Tighten your needle screw with the tool, but don't white knuckle tight it. Then, uh, when we thread our machine, and we, I'm going to unthread it just to show you how to properly thread it, is uh, we unthread the machine, we cut up here, and we pull it the same direction as it sews. This way, debris and such does not get clogged up inside your machine, and you're going to go see your dealer for a extra maintenance when it really doesn't need it uh, if you pull it the right direction. So we need two threads, and inside here, if you look real close, there's a divider, a real thin little piece of metal. So you want to have one thread on the left and one thread on the right of that divider. So I'm going to do the, the red thread red thread first on the left. I'm uh, there are speed dating here. All right, and I have my thread guide attached. I sell all these thread guides and people call and said the screw's too short. So you take the screw out of the back. Well, you just need to rotate the uh, thread guide to where the funnel shaped metal part, if you look right here, is facing the spool. And then it'll pop in there. You don't need an extra long screw. The screw that comes out of your machine is plenty long to put that in. So, all right, so we're going to get this first guide. And uh, I said I was going to put it on the left, so I'm putting it on the left side of that guide down and thread it around just like you would thread any regular way. I'm going to do the needle eyes neck last. Now, the other thread, I uh, put this little foam guy with the Teflon side up so this guy will unroll nicer. 
and you don't have to but I like to come through there just to get it a uh, little more thread control now I'm going to go through the guide again and then we're going to put this on the opposite side of that little divider so we're going to put it on the right side okay that divider just keeps the tension more even if you have a triple needle you put two on one side and one on the other so that's how we can make even three needles work with one tension unit so you cannot use your needle threader on this twin needle don't even try it um, in fact at this point if I had an 8 series I would come up here come on up here to the screen and we're going to tell the machine that it is a 4.0 twin needle. If you did that on 8 series, it wouldn't attempt to thread it. Uh, this guy, you try to thread it and nothing's going to happen. So we're going to do the red thread on the left. And I have a, I sell a lot of these needle threaders. This needle threader comes with uh, the new L8 series sergers. So this is a Bernina needle thread. It's really nice and I'll show you how it works. Uh, you get the thread in and you put the thread in the you don't tuck it in tight, you just rest it into the little groove and it has to go horizontal. Then I'm gently pushing against the needle, following the groove down to the hole, and it finds the hole and it pushes. There's a loop, and if you look, there's a little hook on the end. I'm going to use that hook, and that needle is threaded. Now I'm going to do the same with the other one. It, there is an up and a down, so you have to make sure the arrow is pointing upward. So I just make sure that little hooky job is pointing upward. I grab my thread, get it horizontal. Again, don't tuck it in tight because it won't be able to push through. It'll be now I'm gently get my thread here, get it on the needle groove, push it through. The eyes there. Got the hook. Little job there. Alright. So my two needles are threaded. So I sell these on my Shopify account. They're just called needle threaders. And again, they're a really good product. I'm going to get that through. If it kills me, there we go. Now we're going to put the number 30 foot on. It's suggested there. All right. So it's never a bad idea to carefully rotate your hand wheel toward you to make sure that those needles actually go into your your presser foot so with it being turned on and selecting everything the machine presets every presets where the needle is uh, if I try to do a zigzag right now because it knows everything it 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 won't let me do a very wide zigzag all right so now we actually can uh, keep the bobbin threaded exactly the way it comes the bobbin thread will actually catch both threads and it looks like a baby zigzag on the back side. So let's grab a new piece of fabric and we're just going to do a uh, regular weight. So Pintex shirts are usually on a lightweight cotton or lawn. Um, you need something that will actually buckle, pucker up. So if you try to do a Pintex on denim, it's just going to give you two straight lines. All right. So, I, uh, in your instructions, if you don't have a 7 Series or a machine where uh, you can, uh, it has a securing feature, you may want to turn that off. I did try the cutting feature, and the cutting feature works just fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing here. And as it sews, the twin needles are caught by the bobbin thread, and it pulls and puckers that fabric up. And I'm just going to raise the foot. They say you should keep your, uh, you should pull your bobbin thread to the top. Well, I forgot to do that, and and maybe it, it uh, doesn't have a perfect starting stitch. So you actually should pull your bobbin thread to the top when you start sewing. But now we got a pin tuck there. So I actually found that uh, if you keep your tension regular, so anytime you've adjusted anything, you touch the circled yellow box it puts it back to default so let's see what it looks like at default so uh, if you have more tension it's going to make more of a pucker now at default if I'm just you know guiding the fabric a little bit 
it does not pucker as much. It does not pin tuck as much. Which may be your, the effect you want. See, it's a more of a rounded pin tuck instead of a real tight pin tuck. The first one I had set up for two units higher than its standard. Now, the other thing you can do with a uh, pin tuck is you can do it over a cord. So there's a cord guide tool, and it comes standard with 8 series or used to. And it has a screw, a screwdriver, and this little uh, tube at the end. So we're going to put this guy on the base there. We're going to screw this screw in. And this special screwdriver fits right into a little hole drilled in the middle of that screw slot so it doesn't slip out as easy. So just have this secure. It doesn't have to be white knuckle tight. And uh, we're going to take our cording. And this cording goes through the hole pretty easily. If you uh, have trouble getting it through, you want to use a, um, there's a wire that comes with this to help guide. Or I use these dental things. These are little dental picks with the little loop on the end. You can put the single guide through, put the fabric in, or the thread in the loop and pull it through. So that guide is going to guide this um, cording right down the middle of my sewing. So I'm going to go halfway and then I'm going to increase my tension to 6.5, two units, and show you the difference. So see how the cut will still work? Uh, not a lot of difference. Well, guess what? We didn't have the cording in there. The cording wasn't lined up to the back of the fabric. So I'm going to do the cording one more time. Make sure it's to the back. It's curling here. All right, here we go. Going to get this cording to the back. All right. All right, so the cording's on the back. I'm going to do part of it at the default. So nice tight corded and a little bit looser cording there. So just a matter of the effect you want. Okay. So here's a bonus. Any of you ever wonder what this little hole in front of your uh, um, needle plate is for? It's for the same purpose. They could not put this hole in the 8 series, so that's the reason they came up with this device. So I'm going to show you how to... Um, thread that cord up through the bottom and you don't have to have this extra um, cord guide unit. Alright, so we are going to take our plate up just a little bit. We are going to guide this through. Alright. And now I'm going to get some of this, well this is pearl cotton, what I'm trying to, the cording I'm using is pearl cotton. You can use anything that's like heavy that works, will give you that little extra effect. So now I'm just getting that loop through there and pulling that this guy up. And with the other hand. Oh, and I lost it. It just fell right back down. So let's try that one more time. Got a lot of things here. All right, so we're going to line that up, get it through the hole in the plate. Now I'm going to get that cording in there again, hopefully. It would be easier if I didn't have this stitch regulator table on here. All right, and I had my handy dandy tweezers here. <laughs> Best tweezers in the world. Okay, I'm hooked on something here underneath. 
you know, all my rehearsals were fine. So, it just hooked on something. All right. Well, I'm not going to fuss with it anymore, but that's how you get the cording. It will go up through that hole, and it will do the same exact thing as this. So, to me, the frustration level is probably worth $32. All right. Um, what else? I lost my train of thought now. Oh, we're going to do a uh, pin tucking over a rat tail, a really heavy cording. They make rat tail on number one and number two sizes. Okay, we got that back on. So we're going to get the rat tail we're going to use is, I believe this is the number two size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get this down, kind of in the middle there, put a f my fabric over it, and you can feel it under there. And then if you just tap that button, I've got it trapped right in that first groove. We got regular there. Let's go ahead and show you how cool this is. So I'm just letting the machine go right over. Oh. This ever happened to you? You think you're out of bobbin thread? Well, you forgot to close the bobbin door. <laughs> All right, so now we have a really enhanced pin tuck look. I even did it earlier with little curves and stuff, so it uh, it's a fun little effect. So maybe you can put this around the edge of a, a quilt binding or uh, in the middle of a block or something. It's uh, de designed long time ago pin tucking, well still now, pin tucking garments are very uh, special. So this has been Bernina Jeff. Hope you uh, learned how to use your uh, pin tucking feet and they are the foot of the month with Bernina for May, not May, June of 2023. Thank you very much. Please uh, check my Shopify account. That's bernina-jeff.myshopify.com or email me at jpvlefty at aol.com. Call the shop, 970-256-1293. Thank you very much.